Welcome to another edition of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. And my guest today is a very outgoing, boisterous, um, very much beautiful, as he likes to call himself, second baseman, middle infielder, yep. Mr. Orlando Hudson, the O-Dog. Oh, how are you, sir? Man, I'm good, brother, man. Thanks for having me on. By the time it took you long enough, I guess I'm at the bottom of the totem pole. <sighs> you know what? I've been on a string of Blue Jays lately for uh, for this, and it's it's been pretty interesting. Now I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I have to wait. I figured I went, I did. I went to the barrel, and I go, you know what? Oh, was the last one. I think I need to get on here, so I figured. Um, and it's taken us a while, oh, a few weeks, because for some odd reason, the Internet connection in Darlington, South Carolina, is not very good these days. But see, first of all, First of all, see, first of all, this is God country where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? That's I'm born and raised right here. So we are blessed to have everything. You see, we got the internet that come out in 2026. Y'all ain't there yet. So I got to, you know, I got to kind of adjust my internet to stoop down to y'all level for 2022 internet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Though. So, so you're uh, saying you're ahead of the game. Oh, we, oh, everything down here ahead of the game. That's why... People trying to move to God's country, man, down here in South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? But we got to – I keep it to a minimum every year. Keep it to a minimum, man. You can't just move down here and think you just fit to live lavish. We don't let everybody in down here. We can't do that. We don't want nobody to come down here messing up what we got going on. I'm trying to think of the last time I was actually in South Carolina. Uh, Pauly's Island probably, oh, playing some yeah. golf out there. I know you can drive through the golf, right? You can drive through the bunkers with your golf cart and everything else. Good times, alligators and uh, yeah. and the such, right? But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you're a golfer, are you? You're a switch hitter. No. So No, man. I golf. I golf only like twice a year for about nine holes when I get invited to, you know, to go to a couple of these things. And that's it, man. I'm, I'm just there. Now, one thing about me. I'm going to make the golf course look good. Now, that's for sure. That's for sure. I'm going to make the golf course look very good when I step out. I'm dressed to the T. My drive is unbelievable. For about nine to 12 holes, I am I can go on tour right now, and I'll probably I'll be leading the whole way with just only a handful of strokes. You'd be like the, I think it's like the happy Gilmore you would be out there. Like you said, just you're the you're just you'd be the you'd be the face of the tournament. That's all it would be about. Come come watch O play golf for a few holes. That'll be it. Yeah, that'll be it. You know you'll have and you know Tiger and Furyk and you know and the rest of those big dogs back there. You know, um, trying to catch up, playing catch up really. But um, I just do what I do when I'm out there, man. I don't like to show off too much. I just like to go out there and stroke a little bit, let everybody know I still got it. Um, you know, let, let everybody know that my, my, my game is on point. And, and if anybody need pointers, they can just call me. You left-handed or right-handed when you do actually jump on the golf course? Right-handed. Are you? Okay. Is that your natural side? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. I, 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 I'm going to have to watch this golf swing at some point. I'm picturing a kind of a Charles Barkley-esque type thing. But, man, that's, uh, not, that's, not, that's disrespectful. See, now if I shut the computer down, you're going to feel real bad. <laughs> man, my swing looked way better than Charles Barkley. Man, you have lost your mind, bro. <laughs> man, 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 my, my swing like Davis Love the third. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, like I said, you could be it's the interaction that you have. You've always had that as even as a player, being out in the field talking to guys, just but you know, it was fun. It was it was uh it was boisterous and you were and it was kinda it was that's just part of your game, isn't it? Just yeah. just being that um you know, especially where you are, middle infield, you get to talk to everybody. So many people come running by. I I'm sure you always had a comment for everybody and anybody that came by. Definitely. You know, you got to keep the game fun, man. The game is long enough, and it's definitely the hardest sport to play, you know. Um, so you got to keep the game fun, keep it interesting, talk a little trash, have a little fun with it. Before you know it, man, it's the ninth inning. Yeah, you don't – you don't. I don't know if you see that as much nowadays with, you know, the guys – you know, you, Brandon Phillips, were guys that were really active just in general with the players that are on the field, you know, talking and everything else, having a good time, but knowing when, when to lock in. And, oh, exactly. Uh, do you see that – and are you seeing that anymore? Not really, man. Not really. Um, you know, kids that know each other, they talk a lot and all that before the game, but during the game, they they don't say much, man. It's a different generation, bro. You know, they don't say anything too much. Uh, it's a different time, uh, different mindsets. So, you know, still the same game, but the game hasn't changed really, but we're trying to make it change and we are changing it, but the game is still the game. Um, so kids look at it a little differently. But I mean, I, I think that's just the way we were brought up. 
right? To you respecting your guys out there, you're having a good time with it, but no one went to lock in. Are you, are, you, are you seeing that they're just not able to once the game starts? They just become robots as opposed to just having fun with it. <laughs> well, you do see a lot of robots out there. Um, <clears throat> we'll mention we come through a different era. Um, still got a lot of great baseball players today. You know, you got some some monsters out there that's that's going to break and shatter so many records. And it's great to see Pujols um, and Molina doing what they're doing and Scherzer and, you know, doing what he's doing and, you know, uh, Kershaw. It's awesome to see those guys still hanging on and still banging and throwing that thing and Verlander. But today's game, man, everything is so much strictly by the book, you know. Um, and you see guys, they may speak on the field. They may say one or two words, but it's just like, I'm here to play and um, let's get going. You know, uh, I don't see too much of having fun or having fun with it or just strictly enjoying it, man. It's a job, but at the same time, we are blessed to do something that so many people will pay just to be in our shoes and we're making so much money doing it. And it's like, man, make it fun. You got kids coming to watch you play. And so make it fun, you know, and it's, it's the reason why, you know, NBA and NFL has pretty much jumped, you know, America's favorite pastime. You know, you were, you know, I remember you playing and stuff. You were, you were the batting gloves un unhooked, right? And you were the one, you know, base hits and stuff. Just, I remember like when we were playing up in Cooperstown, just base hits, but you're just, just talking as you're running down there. But, but it wasn't trying to rub it in. It was just more of having fun, right? Just being out yeah. there and just being, you know, like you say, you just, you just like to be pretty, right? You just like to be outgoing yeah. and and try and draw that at not it's and it wasn't a negative attention it was just kind of uh you know I'm, I'm having fun with this game but i'm still at playing at the highest level i'm having fun with it though as well yes you got to if you don't have fun with it then you're in the wrong business you know what i'm saying you definitely uh you definitely cannot just go out there and play a long season and not enjoy it i mean you can't just strictly just beat your head against the wall because you gave up eight or you just struck out four times. That's part of the game because that man at the, on, on the on the mound got a job to do. Um, so, I mean, it's it's part of it, man. So you if to to keep yourself in a kid sport. Remember now, we playing a kid sport, and these guys are making so much money. And you mean to tell me you can't have fun with it? I'm pretty sure that I can pick out at least ten things that can be a lot worse than playing baseball for a living. You know, I think we all can. And and I'm pretty much sure that we can if the people in the stands that come to watch us play switch positions with us, you know, I don't think that they would that they wouldn't complain the way or they would actually have fun doing it. You know, so you can't take the fun out of the game. That's why I like watching Little League baseball, man. It just it's just the fun these kids are having and they're jumping around. It's a joy and they take it to heart when they lose, they cry. I'm like, man, that's, you know, it, it's, it's fun. It, it's funny. And it's fun at the same time, because that's the part of it. But the older you get, the more we make it a business. And, you know, some guys don't know how to keep them, don't, don't know how to make business fun. No, you're right. And, you know, the interaction, with, especially with the fans, you know, signing autographs before and after games. I know they've put up a lot of these nets now for if a safety issue, but still it seems like it's almost talking to the to the players through plate glass. You yeah. know, you're, you're not able to, you know, to lean in for pictures and stuff. You, you know, you see guys reaching around uh, cameras, nets, handing people stuff as opposed to just and, and I'm from the fan side of it. That's what you want. You want to be interact. You like a guy like you, who's who's boisterous, outgoing. You can talk to. You can joke around with. You know, and uh, and and just get close to. And now it just seems like they've taken it away. Uh, yeah. And 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 it's hard, especially for us, right? Being because we're we're outgoing, outgoing yeah. guys. And I've been that way my entire life. Were, were you the same way? You know, in high school, you know, going through pro ball, going into college, and, and into pro ball, the same outgoing, or is that something you just kind of developed as you went through? I've been, I've been like that since I was a kid, man. I mean, <laughs> my mom got stories for days. This ain't nothing changed. This ain't nothing. I just became, I was like, I'm a chain dog. No. I was the same way in class. I was the same way. Nothing never changes. I, that just me. I always been a high wired guy from the time the good Lord put my feet on the floor to the end of the day till I lay back down at night. I always been loud, obnoxious and having fun. And that just has been me. I mean, I, I still see some of my high school and elementary teachers and they say, my goodness, you haven't changed one bit. I wish I could write you up 
again or right now, <laughs> but it is a part of it, man. <laughs> we have to get your mom on here one day too, just to, that'd be a, that's a good idea. Uh, we can get everybody's, all these athletes, parents on here to moms, especially and see how it was. Uh, yeah. The stories they have, right? Cause I'm sure they'd embarrass the crap out of all of us doing that stuff. Oh man, of course they would. Of course they would. So, so you went to a, I couldn't, what, what school was it in South Carolina? Was it a JUCO? What was it? Yeah. JUCO Spartanburg Methodist. Spartan? Reggie Sanders went there. Dwight Smith went there. Um, y'all yeah, maybe have some names that came out of there. So yeah, right here on my South Carolina, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Gotcha. So we, I talked to one of your teammates, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Bobby file we talked about playing and, and, that, <laughs> and uh, the group of guys that you came up with, you know, oh. when we came up right at our, in our, a, in our generation was kind of one of those be seen, not heard type of thing. Right. Yeah. And you, you and I are the, probably the same thing. We're just outgoing and I'm sure we were given a lot of crap for it. Right. But, but yeah. also because we were showing up and doing the work as well, you know, so you made it fun, right? There's all kinds of different personalities. You have to learn to, you know, interact with going from. Oh man, that locker room is full of different personalities, <laughs> man. So that's why, you know, that's another good thing too, man, that I, you know, guys that was kind of sheltered or kind of felt like they want to stay in the locker room, man, me having fun. It's kind of, it kind of brought them out their shell, you know what I'm saying? And like, man, this is fun, you know, cause everybody is different. Everybody come from different backgrounds, nationalities, you know, you got this little African-American guy straight from South Carolina, from the South, don't know nothing about, anything else ain't really been out of South Carolina. So, you know, then me just being me, I wasn't changing, man. No need to change who you are. You are who you are. That's what God made me. So I am who I am. So I wasn't changing. And, you know, a lot of guys, man, was able to, you know, gravitate to me because I felt like they was like a, I'm not saying I'm perfect by far. I'm, I'm not, I'm not even close to being perfect, but I'm like a safe haven because I enjoy things. I didn't judge people. I just had fun play the game, treat my teammates like brothers, love each and every last one of them. And that's the way the game should be. That's the way I played it. And you're right. You know, you play with so many different backgrounds where guys are from, you know, weren't you and I, and, you know, talking about Bobby, we didn't play in baseball hotbeds. I mean, right. You're, you're in you know, South Carolina. I'm in Delaware. This is just not stuff that, that you see a lot of, but I think, yeah. you know, our personalities kind of helped us, you know, you said you talk about progressing through that because people, you know, a lot, some guys are just shy. Some guys are afraid to say anything, you know. If, if oh, we, yeah. And if people ask now, if, if you know, if we're in a bad mood, we're not smiling. Oh, what's wrong with you? Am, am I not allowed to just take a break? Right? We all have to learn how to, t to take a break, right? And, and, it, and it's tough yeah. because people, you know, want, want us to be the same way all the time. But it's, just, it's hard. It's harder than it is. You know, some days you just have really long days, especially we talk about those bus rides. Uh, right through wherever i mean 13 14 hour bus rides yeah man these kids got it made now man these nice buses and the way these minor league fields look brother i mean they are already in the big leagues when they step in rookie ball these fields are unbelievable you know they got it made now man today's game is totally totally different from when you and i came up and some of the clubhouses we had to endure and some of the conditions on the field we had to endure but Hey, we just played. No need to complain about the field. You know, it, that's, that's what that's all the team had, and that's what you play on. You know, you're here to play baseball. You're not here to play on. You know, if you want a better field, play better and get to the big leagues. That's all I can tell you. So, you know, we talked about these uh, these updated rule changes. Are you know you being a middle infielder? Are you a fan of uh, the peeling off part of it, or do you you know the slide have to be sliding at the base, or what are your thoughts on all that? Man, slide. Play the game. You know, play the game. I don't like that peeling off. Yeah, I, I tell my guys when I'm out in Arizona or whoever I'm watching, you know, one of our teams, I don't want to see our guys peeling off. You run through the bag, man, you slide. You slide. We're not peeling off. David Ortiz, the only guy I knew that peeled off. I mean, he got numbers. He can do that. He can peel off. We got 20-year-olds I'm watching the big leagues and I'm watching guys just peel off and I'm watching our minor league system, watch other teams, they're peeling off. And I'm like, no, we're not peeling. That's not the way the game is, man. You play the game hard just like our forefathers played the game hard you know we're not gonna sit there and just give up a double oh well i'm out i'm just gonna stand up no slide he may drop the ball that can be the run that it could be the run on first base that the next guy hit a double we score and not a game title we go up by one so no i ain't no peeling off i play the game yeah that's the way the game need to be played play the game yeah because i mean you know we played you were able to, as long as you could reach that base you could hook somebody as far out as you wanted to Exactly, and I'm, and I'm sure but they were gunning for you too, right? They knew, yeah. 
right? Yeah. So, so, so the neighborhood call and all that is gone now. You got to stay on the bag a little longer. I don't know about me staying on that bag with Gary Sheffield or Ryan Klesko, who he got he got me once coming in barreling in hard. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't I don't think they would agree with just sliding to the back because turning the dog plays an art. But now it's like you know it, there's no there's no art about it. You can just catch it and stay on the bag and just throw it. You know. I used to love turning double plays because you can make it unique. You could do different things, the jump throw, to kind of swing your leg back. So now you don't have to do any of that. You know, the, you, uh, you know, those guys, we're talking about the guys that slide, slide hard. And, you know, now guys just, you know, just slide in, stop, you know, guys were looking, they knew, and you knew exactly too, who, who wasn't going to get down. Right. What, what, oh, are you, yeah. what are you taught? If they weren't sliding, where are you throwing it? I'm throwing right through their forehead. <laughs> exactly. Right through exactly. their forehead. Right, yeah. because you so knew that was your you way to get him. To make him get down. Exactly. Because some guys like to slide late. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They want to slide late to make sure he don't complete that throw. So you want to throw right through their forehead. That'll make him get down. Oh yeah, and that's and like I said, and that was what you knew. You knew to get out of the way, but and that's that skill, right? You yeah. you were taught how to, you know, protect yourself using the bag on the backside, throwing the ball. Of knowing, okay, uh, who's at first right now? All right, we know we've got to get rid of it because yeah. I'm going to get blown up. Right. And yeah. you get pissed off your third baseman or shortstop leaves you out to dry Oof. when those guys are coming. Right. Yeah. Especially the late sliders, even if you're on the backside, because you were going to get a cleat probably in that right in your ankle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kles- right. Yeah. Ryan Klesko got me. I still got the little gash on my it's healed, but I still got that mark on my leg where he got me, man. So we laughed about it a few years ago. I said, man, I wish we were playing now because I need to get revenge. Yeah. But, and and. You know, it wasn't like you were getting pissed off at some. It was just part of that. They were playing hard. They knew they were coming. They're playing hard. Exactly. No, but they need to get pissed off. They were playing hard. It's part of the game. Yeah. You know, that's my fault for trying to be too cute on the field. So I left my leg hanging and he got me. And that's, and that, you know, that's part of the stuff that, that's changed from, you know, from how we were. You know, you, you were talking about, uh, you know, in the minor leagues that you're dealing with. So what are you doing these days as far as uh, in the professional side of baseball? Uh, special assistant to the farm director and our farm director, I'm going to tell you right now, Josh Barfield is a, uh, is a beast. He's going to be a GM before we know it. I'm looking for him to be a GM very soon. Um, you know, he's had learned a lot from the late great Mike Bell has been our farm director before he passed away. Um, and now we got Mike Hazen, who's our GM now in Arizona and he's learned a lot from him. I've learned a lot from Hayes. Matter of fact, I played against Mike Hazen in rookie ball. Man, he was in Idaho Falls, and I was in um, Medicine Hat, Ontario, uh, in rookie ball. So, you know, he's a great dude. Um, the, the man is smart. And, J- and Josh Barfield, who's our farm director, man, is he's scooping up every bit of knowledge, and he's up and coming. And when I say up and coming, he's up and coming strong. Um, we love the way he do, um, the things he does, and how he had the coaches and – you know, uh, players and his staff around him, everybody on one accord. And it's it's awesome to see how he works and the things he's been doing, man. And I can't wait to see him get to the highest level and have a successful major league team up under his belt. So what, so what are you doing then as far as the special assistant with, with the farm director? Are you, are you traveling around like a court, like a I rover? I like or? everybody else. I go see major league games. I go see from AAA on down to the DR and kiss babies, ride my golf cart and sign autographs. That's what I'm here for, man. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm here for, man. They got to keep this face in the camera, bro. I mean, it just is what it is. They don't need to be sugarcoating it, though. You know what I'm saying, Jughead? They don't need to be sugarcoating none of that. So the best they me do is tell you the truth, man. That's the, that, that's the main reason, brother. They want to keep this handsome face. See, what I was, I'm, I'm in between Brad Pitt and Denzel Washington in a baseball uniform. That's exactly what I was. I played baseball for fun, but I'm really just a model. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Denzel Pitt is what you are. That's what you, that's what you're gonna be. So so then why not do the TV side of it, Deno? Where you can be out, you can be you can be beautified all the time. You can wear yourself a nice suit and well, you know you can what? wear a different. I did suit. a little bit of that, man, and and myself and Harold Reynolds have talked about that. But I love what I do. I do. I love what I do, man. They they, they don't hound me. The D backs they don't hound me. I make my own schedule. We got a great staff, man. We have fun. I mean, I would do some TV. But I don't know about every day because I love being around these kids. They ask questions, and you know, the, 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 when the main questions I get is when the kids say, "Oh, oh dog, man, you was my dad's favorite player." I'm like, "God, dog, well, how do you think I am? I'm your dad's favorite player," you know. So, 
uh, those kind of things you know, make us laugh. But I love being around those kids, man. I love, I really do. I love being in the clubhouse, you know, go for the major league team. And then I go down to the A ball and, you know, me and Tori Lavello, our big league manager, you know, he asked questions about, oh, no, what coaches you like, what players you like. We talk about those type of things, man. So, you know, just being on TV, I feel like I'm not, I won't be a part of it. And, and, and I feel like I owe these guys, you know, so much, man. And because being around them so much with our coaching staff and our office staff, man, and our coordinators and, you know, it's, it's a blast. It's a blast, man. I mean, we have absolute fun, but I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to be a, 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 a wrecking ball. Just give me a little while longer. We're going to be a wrecking ball. You're going to see all kind of folks wearing Arizona Diamondbacks and jerseys, not just for the colors either, for the, for them dogs we putting on that field. Watch what I tell you now. So you have a lot of input then as far as through that system with those guys then, you know, going yeah. around and seeing them and, and uh, even yeah. on draft day as well. Are you, are you involved in on draft day well, as well? Draft day, you know, um, most times I was going out before COVID hit and I was announcing the players, but, you know, I do keep in contact uh, with Dick Lanier, you know, doing, you know, during the draft time, that was cool, man. But I wasn't in the room with them. You know, they want my face on TV to <laughs> announce the players. And the players, who else do, do the players want to represent? d want me to represent the players. The players want to see the dog, baby. That's what they come to draft for. They want to see the dog as the first person they want to see in the organization. I love Gonzo, uh, Luis Gonzalez. You know, he World Series, you know, uh, game-winning hit. You know, I love Randy Johnson. World Series, Hall of Famer, you know what I'm saying? But they want to see the dog, bro. I mean, they look at me. They want to see me, baby. So I got to show that love with the kid. <laughs> I'm surprised hey, you just man. don't have hey, your own, ca- your, own is, camera, your own camera crew following you around, though. You know, I, I just I can see like a real housewives of Darlington type of thing going. You could run, you could <laughs> just a weekly show. What's the, what's O doing this week? And it's, it'll probably be the same thing if you just just a mask with the just you know like you said you're shaving up nice and just yeah. just making yourself yeah. pretty. So I mean, yeah. and I'm sure you explain that to these guys in the minor league level. Look, so the first thing it starts is right here. It's with the you got to start right here with the, with the beautified, and then you, you can beautify the game. Is that how I'm, I'm, I'm exactly how you're explaining it, isn't it? Yeah, you you have to because see a lot of them kids, man, you know. And I, you know, we always, I always tell them guys, say, man, if you was as handsome as me, you, you know, you'll be trouble in this league, man. But, you know, you got a long way to go, kid. I got to show you how to do it. This is a blessing what I got. You got to work on yours. I roll out of bed and look like that. See, see, so see me, see me just getting beautified. It just make it, I'm just really, it makes it more easier on the eyes. You know what I'm saying? But I, I got to help. I should hold a beauty class. That's what I should host. Double play beauty class. <laughs> And the best part about that is, though, because these guys, you know, they're young guys and they're hungry. They want to get to the big leagues, yes. right? And they're in rookie, and they go, "Who in the world is this guy?" I know this, that's what they do. Yeah, right. They're they're afraid, but at the same, they, you know, finally, I think once I think once they're around you, they realize it. You know, he's this guy's pretty. You know, it's pretty funny. We can actually loosen up, and I'm sh- and yeah. I'm sure a lot of they they need that. They need to know yeah, that it's okay it's to be just, themselves, right? Missed. The crazy thing is, I go in the field and take ground balls with them, and I be talking cash trash. I'm like, the first one miss it, you're gonna have to run 36 miles nonstop, and you better do it in three minutes. So we have fun, but we, I, you know, I, I get one of the young kids as a partner, and we'll take turns turning double plays, and you know, first one to drop one. But then, you know, uh, Gil Velasquez, our AAA manager, who was our infield coordinator, he started hitting me a little too too many steps to the backhand or forehand. Now my hamstrings barking. Now I gotta walk around, get on my golf cart now because my lower back tight, my hamstrings barking. I can't go get on the training table because our coordinators and our coaches gonna take pictures of me. Then they gonna post it around the whole complex. So now I gotta be cool the rest of the day. And when everybody gone, I gotta have one of the young buck trainers stay back and get in my lower back and my hamstrings. <laughs> Hey, I'm too cool. Hey, dog, I'm too cool to be lit up on the training table. I be showing them young bucks, man, what it is. Man, look at me, 44 years old, and I'm out here doing it. Y'all sweating. I ain't never sweat when I when, when in spring training. I ain't never broke a sweat. I took ground balls for nine hours. I ain't broke a sweat. Taking ground balls and eating crackers, whistling Dixie for nine straight hours, never choked, didn't need no water, didn't break a sweat. That was how, that, that's how I did it. <laughs> Oh my gosh! 
<laughs> and then run six and eight, and then run 26 poles in two minutes. Still ain't broke a sweat. Ready to go for the next day. These kids now take two ground balls and need water break. You know, man, come on, man. I'm taking 300 ground balls, man. 300 ground balls. And that's you're, you're trying to you're helping that philosophy, and that's the hard part, <laughs> you know that we deal. You want it's that old school mentality, right? You got to work, got to work, man. Put, you got to grind. Put, but I, you know, I keep them laughing like that, though, man. I keep them laughing, so it keeps them loose. Coaches love it, the guys love it, man. So you know, it, it makes spring fun. It makes when I go into town, we have fun. We know we gonna get that work done, though. We gonna get that work done, but I'm gonna keep it loose to make them want to work. You know, they feel comfortable. They feel loose. Like, you know what? Let's grind. You know, oh, hey, oh, man, we got old dog in town. For they have some fun now. You know, let's have some fun. Like, you should have been having fun. You don't need me in town to have fun. You should have been. This is this, this is a game that you're blessed to play. You know, enjoy it, man. Don't take it for granted. Yeah, and that's and you're right. We, you know, when it becomes a job, you know, that's when yeah. that's when it loses its fun. Right. And yes. I think that's what they look at as a job. This is no, it's you, you're making it you're making it fun for these guys to understand that you it's OK to, to be loose. Right. It's OK. Yeah. You can't play up tight, man. You can't play up tight. You got to be you got to be loose. The only thing I told Mike Hazen and, and Barfield is that uh, if it rains, I can't be outside because this sweet chocolate, if it melt, it will be it will be, you know, women trying to lick me up off of the turf and off the ground. And, you know, people leaving, women leaving work and everything, people leaving work trying to come lick this chocolate up. So and when it's raining, I can't go outside. I don't want to melt. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> <laughs> and this is the stuff that I miss. This is what you don't <laughs> see anymore. You know, even, uh, gosh, you, you know, this the outgoing personality. I remember uh, Matthew, remember Matthew LaCroix? Yeah, with, yeah. he was the same. Boy. Yeah, he was in the fall league with us, playing with yeah, us. South Carolina kid, though. Yes, I, 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 yeah. There you go. Look at there's two South Carolina guys. Hey, God, you such a man. You know, only thing, only thing wrong with him though, he did, he did go to the wrong school. That's it. Ah, okay. So you were yeah, supposed to go to South school. Carolina then, huh? But he, yeah, no, he you went were there, but, even better. You okay. Know? okay, he's a great dude though. I love, I, I love oh, Big Mac. He's out there just dancing. Ow! He would yell it across the field during batting practice, and Mikey Young and I would just start. And you know, that's what it was. It was, it yeah. was the guys you could you you knew it was fun. So uh, yeah. Lee Croy told Lee Croy told me a story one time. They were in Boston, and uh, he was on deck. Took he says, "I took my hat off, my helmet off, from it started sweating." You know, you know Fenway on Dexter was right there, and he goes, I mean, "Right there." This kid goes, "Hey, Dad, they're letting the coaches play." <laughs> <laughs> Cause he, Cause he had gray hair and I think at 19. Yeah. So, so he goes, he goes, that's when I knew I was done. <laughs> that's a good one, right? That's a good one right there, man. I like that. But, I you, like that. And I, you know, and I look, then that, that's funny too. When I got to, I, I signed, I got to pro, I got to Pulaski, Virginia and the guys that were already there, they thought I was a coach. I go, damn, how old do I look? I know, right? I'm like, holy cow. And I'm, I'm older than you, oh. How do you mean? I'm 44. I'm 44. When's your yeah, but when when's your birthday? Um, hey man, let me tell you something. <laughs> hey, for some reason, God put me and Jesus in the same month, man. We both December. Okay, so you got me by about a I'm week. December 12th. Okay, you all right? You got me by about three and a half weeks. Then I'm January early, uh, so see? you'll be 45. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Hey man, respect your elders, man. <laughs> Hey, by the time you got here, man, I was already making way up gym, baby. <laughs> uh, I didn't have the speed for that, man. I was built for comfort. Right? Yeah, you built I, for I, comfort. I went, I went, <laughs> I was but, built, hey, I'm, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what I am mad about though. Hey man, you did hit a line drive off my great friend, late great Hall of Famer Roy Halliday. You remember that dude? Yep. Oh, Mitch. It. <sighs> it's like as soon as he released that sinker. It was right back off his shin. But the thing about it is, though, if he if that ball wouldn't have hit his leg, I'd have made you on my web. You <laughs> made my web gym film, too. <laughs> you and Manikino were playing out there. I remember I was talking to Bobby Five about this. That ball hit his leg, and it dropped straight down. It didn't go anywhere else. It dropped straight down. Straight down. And, and all he did was grunt the whole time, like, <clears throat> and I knew it was broken. That ball was, I want to know if we had that, what you call it, that stat cast of the ball off the bat, that had to be every bit over 110. I just, I was crushed. 
I, I, man, Keenan was laughing because Halliday Doc threw me out, and that was the yeah, only that was the only video that was ever removed from the system. He never had that in that that system again. He would have won the Cy Young probably that year in 03. Yes, he would. He was dealing, man. Yeah, yeah, he and was I, dealing. He was nasty, dude. That was that dude. I'm so it gave my first gold glove. That dude had every left hander just hitting me routine two hop ground balls. And I when a ground ball coming to me, I'd be like, Thank you, Doc. And <laughs> you <laughs> probably it. yelled it on its way as it was oh, coming. Yeah, on its way. I appreciate you, Doc. And I'm just making the play. You know, but uh man, I, I love that guy. Uh that that was a, a competitor, uh a, a, a dear friend, uh a way he was the a perfect example of how to train work hard, study, and be a teammate, and be a uh, just an unbelievable, hardworking, want to be the best, loving guy. That a team, if a teammate want to know how to be, that was, that was the guy. If yeah. you want to learn how to work hard, that was the guy. And even If you want to know how to endure pain, that was the guy. If you want to know, know how to throw a bullpen with intense, that was the guy. If you want to know that you gave up five runs in the first inning, and you go out and complete the game at 130 pitches, and you want to look, that was the guy. He just, he no. wasn't very, out, I mean, he wasn't a loud guy, really. You mean, no, he never, man, no. I made him loud because Daisy had to pitch. He don't like to be talked to or touch. So I just walked <laughs> by, I walked by and slapped him side of the head. But like, you can't do nothing. You got to pitch today anyway. You can't, you can't, you ain't fit to hit me. So <laughs> he was, like, hey, no, we love each other. You know, our kids pretty much the same age. And, you know, Miss Brandy Halliday is a sweetheart, man. His, you know, his widow um, and his, both his boys are just, you know, the great kids, man. Oh, man, that's a great family, man. Great family. Great family. Yeah, he, uh, I got the actual chance to play with Doc in 2000 and, and, uh, and 10 and just, you know, being, or 2008 and being around him and uh, just yeah. seeing him, right? And just watching. Uh, oh, yeah. His personality, you know, it was just one of those things. He just never, he just went about his business. But he said he did his work. And, you know, we talk yeah. about, like you said, you smacking him upside the head and whatnot when he's, when he's pitching. But, you know, that's, people go, oh, gosh, that's an unwritten rule. You don't ever talk to guys. You don't, you don't talk to guys this and that. And it's just, that's just not who you were. And they, you know, guys, no. they knew who was coming. Right? Yeah, and then if, if I walk in with some Popeye's chicken, he'd be like, come on, oh, you killing yourself and all this. you say, Doc, if I didn't get it, I ain't going to be to make no web gym for you tonight. I might lace about three doubles in that left center field gap if you act right. Let me get my three-piece dark meat fried chicken on from Popeye's, man. You sit there and study that book. Don't worry about me. You just get me about 10 ground balls so I can win that GG again. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 man, we had a blast, man. We had a blast. Great team, man. I missed that guy, bro. Golly. Did you ever and have he that? Loved his planes, man. He bought planes and loved to build planes and yep. fly planes, you know. And, you know, ironically, that's the way he went out. But, you know, I love him. I talk about him all the time. When I talk about young, talk to our young pitchers, Roy Halliday, the first person to come out of my mouth. That's the first name that come out of my mouth, Roy Halliday. Do they? Do the younger guys ever ask you about, you know, how you played the game at second base, playing in the infield? Did they ever ask you? Or they just sit and they, they even oh, ask questions, ask or are they just questions. afraid to ask who, questions? Oh no, they ask me who is my favorite player, and you know what you like about Roberto Alomar, and I give them a quiz too. Sometimes, like I want somebody to tell me what about Roberto Alomar. I want somebody to tell me what was Tony Gwynn batting average, and you know, and. Um, in 1992 and we just ask because they these kids don't look up they don't study baseball now they don't they don't look up the they don't know a lot about that you know what i'm saying for a lot of the younger guys so you know i give them a quiz to make them dive into baseball history but they ask me all kind of questions like who was your hardest pitcher who was uh who did you like facing all like i didn't like facing none of them <laughs> like who was the hardest pitcher all of them you know so we i have fun with it and um then if they catch, you know, you know, me or Gonzo together, or me or Randy and I together, you know, they, you know, they ask questions about that. And, you know, young guy, Randy, when, when you, when you was facing Bonds, how did you pitch? Or uh, Odal, when you was facing, you know, Clayton Kershaw, what was your mindset? Where were you looking? What side of the plate did you choose? Um, you know, what was your strongest side? And what, you know, they, so they, they, they get, they get into it, but I also ask them questions. So when they go back to the room, they just not on their phones looking up crazy stuff or whatever they do on IG or whatever. I want them to study some baseball players, 
and to know them and to get to know them, you know, and and, and learn about it so they can be able to watch and be like, oh, wow, that kid, that dude there was legit. Like, Alomar, yeah, of course he legit. He's a Hall of Famer, dude. Like, that dude was the best second baseman ever to step on the on the baseball field. So I make those guys answer those type of questions. They, uh, you know, you're right. These kids don't with without you talk about there's too much thinking and i think that's what you create you give them that chance to wait i don't actually have to make this i can have a little bit of fun and actually think and ask ask a question or just more of that just give me more information right you're Mm -hmm. engaging as opposed to uh, and I, I say players today are more re, they're reactive. They're not proactive. You know, they're not going after things. They're waiting for someone no. to tell them. And, you know, no, I think you give them that option of saying, wait, I can actually ask a question and actually get positive feedback can be outgoing and can, and, and can learn as opposed to just absorbing all of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, coming up nowadays, you got these super dads that that want every statistical machine or number, whatever, you know, for their son or their daughter, you know, for that matter. And it's just, it, it, it messes them up. That's too much info, man. See the ball, hit it, catch it and throw it, you know, but the, you got super dads. They want their kids at 12 years old to throw 98. Like he's getting a full ride to Ohio state tomorrow. You know, they got their daughters out there hitting 900 buckets of softballs. Like she going to be, not saying that she won't be, but like she's going to University of Oklahoma and be the next, uh, what was the young lady named? Jocelyn Ayo. You know, like that's a swing, man. That girl has a beautiful swing. So, you know, you got all these super parents that overbearing their kids, man, of trying to be the next Derek Jeter right then instead of learning how to play because the super dads won't quantity. They're not even, they definitely not think about quality. They just say, throw 100. Okay, Dad, what are the mechanics to throw 100 consistently? Okay, Dad, how can I throw 100 but hit my spot? Okay, Dad, how can I throw 100 consistently on the inside corner? No, they just want to throw 100. To the backstop, spiking fastball, they don't care. They just want to throw 100. And a lot of super dads blow out their kids or, you know, put so much pressure on their kids, man. So when these kids do get drafted, some of them that do get drafted, that's all they know. You know, they don't know the game. You know, they still got to learn. They A lot of things we draft these kids, they never heard of nothing that, you know, myself or other coaches are telling them because, you know, it's either daddy ball or, you know, I'm going to do it the way some guru on the internet just said how to do it. And I'm not hating on gurus and I'm definitely not because they making a killing, you know? Um, so, it, you know, it's the part of the game that we got to deal with. But if we can remove some of these super dads out of these kids' way, man, we'll have a lot better athletes. Do you see it, especially roving around the minors, uh, minor leagues? Are you are you sitting in the dugout? Are you sitting in the stands? Are you doing both just to I see? Do both. I do, do both. I like to sit in the dugout for two, for two days, and then I go sit in the stands where I can just look, and I just want to see how the coach is reacting. I want to see how the players reacting, how they're playing, how they carry themselves. And, you know, and I tell players, you know, you know, it ain't just players get called up too now. You know, coaches, they, they their, their goal is to get to the major leagues one day too. It might not be with Arizona. It could be with Pittsburgh. It could be the Braves. We don't know. So I sit back and I watch all of that, man. I'm, I don't take down no notes. I keep everything right here. Um, so we have these meetings, man. You know, we, you know, we want to see everybody, you know, do well and one day fulfill their dream and get to the highest level. Rather with us or with anybody else. My, you know, I, I've been blessed to play in the major leagues a long time. So, I'm definitely going to give my input. If I see a coach or a player, something going wrong, well, yeah, we're going to have a closed door. You know, ain't no fussing, ain't no cussing, ain't no yelling, ain't no disrespectfulness. We're just talking. How can they get better? Because me on this side, I asked Barfield, what can I do better? I asked Hayes, what can I do better? I asked Amiel Sarday, what can I do better? Who was our assistant GM. So we always learning. And I want to help myself to get better so I can better evaluate what we have going on. That's the beauty of it. it. You know, you're right. It is still evolving. And we do have the leg up on those younger guys to, uh, you know, to be able to teach them. But do you see the parents, you know, the super dads, even in the minor league level, yelling from the bleacher, yelling from the stands? Uh, we, I have seen a couple with a couple of uh, players that have moved on to different teams now. And I had to talk to one dad, you know, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We can't have this, but this ain't rec ball. No, 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 no. We can't have this. But the dad, he understood. He understood. Like, I know what you mean, man, but you can't drill. No wonder this kid is scared to cut his phone on to even watch um, SpongeBob. He might get yelled at. The kid just, he got to force to watch baseball 24-7. Like, geez, dude, 
Why watch some BET or something? You know, I don't know. Watch something else. I ain't watching no baseball. <laughs> no, we're not doing that, bro. No, 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 no. I know what I need to do. But yeah, but you know, I see it so much at rec ball level, and I just sit back and I laugh, and I'm saying this saying to myself, it's sad because the mom pacing, the dad kicking the fence. The mom yelling at the umpires, the dad yelling at the coach, the dad wants the son to play shortstop, the mom yelling at that mom because her son is on shortstop. It's it's unbelievable. And, and they don't understand how small of a number it is to make it to the big leagues. I guess the parents, they want to live through their, live their dream through their kids, man. And most of them, by the time their kids get to high school, they quit anyway. You know, they're not, they're not going to make the team because they're going to see better talent. And the numbers just fall off. But... In rec ball and little man, these parents are ruthless, man, and they have no clue about baseball. Not none. Cause I work with a few kids here, you know, and I just listen to the super dads. And I'm like, wow, why is he telling his son that I don't get involved? That's his child. I ain't got nothing to do with that, you know. But you know, it is what it is. I'm not gonna get involved with that. But I laugh to myself and I'm like, this kid is so jacked up. I mean, but it's it's happening all around the country, man. Super dads in every sport too, right? Not just oh, not just baseball. My, it's it's every it. sport you got you got super dads in soccer and hockey. Yeah, like dude, you 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 didn't play, like you couldn't play. And I always ask this question. I spoke at Cal Ripken down at Myrtle Beach, uh, his baseball tournament, and I was like seventy five coaches. I asked every coach. I said, "How many coaches play high school? No, literally, everybody hand went up." How many played middle school and high school? Everybody hand went up. How many college? The numbers drop. I said, uh oh. I said, I'm getting somewhere. I said, how many minor leagues? One hand went up. I said, I don't need to be going no further. So with me asking that, all of a sudden now you guys got all the knowledge of how to make it to the big leagues. When none of you came close, only one coach came close. He got the A ball. And he knew when he got the A ball, the game was tough. So why would you pound your kid mentally like you was Pete Rose? Stay off your kid. I mean, why are you fussing and cussing and yelling and kicking and throwing stuff? Now you got mama mad. Mama done put you in the bedroom upstairs because you yelling at her baby. And he trying to do the best he can. You yelling of how you hit the ball in the backyard. In the backyard, dude, you throwing the ball 10 miles an hour. He facing the kid throwing 85 from 48 feet. What you expect he gonna do? Of course he gonna strike out or pop up. But you yelling now the kid got pressure. He wanna quit. And in today's game, in today's society, I hate to say it, but it's the truth. I ain't gonna hide from it. These the the, the younger generation, whether you black, white, Chinese, green, purple, or orange, they commit suicide left and right. It's a sad situation. So these kids can't take what me and you went through, Mitchy. So a lot of these parents are driving these kids insane. And the way society works now, man, if you ain't who you are, thank you, whatever, these kids don't feel like they fit in, they get bullied. Dude, they kill themselves. You and I got bullied as rookies. We didn't think about doing that. So it's a different mentality in today's world that these kids would not even, they couldn't sniff what you and I went through as rookies or whatever the case may be. So these dads putting these pressure, these super dads, putting this pressure on their kids, that doing more harm than good. But the dads don't see it. They think they're making the kid better, which in reality, they're making the kid not like the dad, hate the sport, and then don't want to be at home. So it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Have you have any athletes at all, in it, you know, at any level come up to you and said anything about that? About, you know, hey, oh, I want to talk to you for a second to the side and just, and just ask a question about that and saying, hey, you know, this is – parents of my dad or whoever that put this kind of stress on have you ever has anybody ever come up to you and said anything about that no they just say that not really come up and said they said back when they were younger their dad put a lot of pressure on them you know uh some of them may say you know man you might get one or two guys say yeah my dad got a lot of pressure on me you know to do this and do that i'm like dude your dad didn't play like your dude is the man your dad right now is the manager at the bank or uh, he made enough money to make it well enough for you to have a great living so he don't know what it takes to take ground ball at the ground ball. All your dad knows quantity. He don't understand the aspect of knowing when you feel a good swing and it might take only five swings. He thinks taking 500 swings is getting your swing right. When in reality, if you're doing it, your swing with a purpose and you understand yourself, you have to first understand your swing, understand your strengths, understand what the 
how to dissect the play. So that's what they don't tell these kids. And these kids don't understand that. They don't know how to dissect the play. They don't know. They just up there trying to cover the whole dish. They don't know nothing about middle end down the middle, middle away. And what am I looking for? They just see ball and just going to swing like they do in the backyard. And then dad gets mad. But yeah, I had a, quite a few kids that told me that the dads were rough on them and all that coming up. So yeah, you know, I mean, I see it though, dog. Mention it's 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 awful. It, it really is. And I know you see it at your level because you have kids that play. So I know you see super dads and they rock around honcho macho and they tough guy and they know all about the game. Because Google told them. Because Google told them. That's what Google said. Yeah, that's what Google said. And that's what some guru on the internet said. And guru sit there saying, thank you. And I'm going to charge 400 bucks to do this. And I have no clue how to get to the big leagues. But I know I watched Barry Bond swing. I know I watched Miguel Cabrera swing. And I know that Derek Jeter did this. I know that Chipper Jones did this as a switch hitter. So I'm going to write down these notes. I'm going to sound good. I'm going to talk good. And parents putting their credit card in the computer left and right. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, so who who did you mimic your game after, oh, growing up? I, I really love Alomar and I really love Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones, a great switch hitter. Alomar, a great switch switch hitter and playing second base. Um, you know, I played a little third coming up too. So Chipper, those guys were like my two guys that I watch like all the time. And you, and that's the thing. I think nowadays these athletes just they're just people think it's there's only one way. There's one way to yeah. to, to hit right. You want yeah. you weren't going to go learn to hit like Aaron Judge or Frank Howard. You're not six foot oh, eight. Right. I got to stand at second base to get the ball in the second row. Yeah, exactly. You don't get bonus don't points. To, right. And I need to do that. That's not my swing. But that's what that's what you're talking about. The gurus these days. That's what they want to te- teach one. Way, oh, yeah. Right. And it's yeah. and it's hard for us. You know, like you said, you just sit back and you want and you just shake your head. Right. Because I right. read that these guys have all they've read all the books. They've done everything. Oh. Yet. It's not good. They don't oh, know what it's good. like to jump in to face a Mariano Rivera, a guy oh, who yeah, would destroy lefties, that. right? Destroy lefties better than righties. Would you hit righty off of him or would you still hit I did that. I did the same thing uh, when I hit lefty off him, ground out. Did you? I started to stand the plate and hit middle handed and put and straddle the plate and do my hands like this and just chop the ball down like that. I mean, I probably would have had better luck. I did get one hit off of him. <laughs> ground out, ground out, ground out, ground out. <laughs> And that's what people don't understand. But but they read a book and said, "Oh, this is what it's like facing Mariano." So then now now they yeah. can try and go teach it, right? As opposed to actually standing there, yeah. you know, in Yankee Stadium, right, oh, where they throw everything. And that's what and, I wish. Yeah, I wish that Mitchie. I wish baseball would just like every start of spring, like for our pitchers' bullpen, they got to face Clayton Kershaw or uh, Max Scherzer or uh, Verlam to get all the gurus and these super dads and let them face that. I would love to. I would pay to see that. I would. I wish they could make that happen. Uh, even yet, face Noah Syndergaard. I would love that. I would love to, for them to sit there and see and let them do the swing that they're teaching their son to do. And let's see if it work on Noah Syndergaard. And the, yeah. that's what I, I want. Every guru. I wish baseball could do that. Put the, every guru and every super dad in there, and let's see what they do. Well, no, they have, they have the VR thing. So now it looks, it's the same thing. Now you can just have the virtual reality. Oh, I'm facing such and such, but you're, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not the same when you've got a guy that's no, throwing a hundred plus in the, you, you know, now that, whether it's going to be in your ear hole or it's going to be, you know, out off the plate, you never know. Yeah, you know I want them to get in the box. I don't want no virtual nothing. Yeah. I want them to put cleats on and get in the box and I want them to face Max Scherzer. Exactly. That's what, yeah. that's what you want to see. Even somebody that, you know, see like a Trevor Hoffman, right? Like a champ, like, like a Trevor Hoffman. Right, you've never oh, seen yeah. somebody something like that that they're throwing. Oh, he's yeah. not throwing very hard. It ain't that easy, guys. It ain't that easy. It looks easy sitting in this seat that you and I sitting in. It looks easy, but once you get in that box, that's a totally different animal. A totally different animal. It's a different mindset. So gurus can't teach that. Mm-mm. Super dads can't teach the mindset. They don't know. They've never been there. And no disrespect to them. I'm glad they raking pockets. It's just a shame that parents are. You know that gullible to hear and see and fall for that, but it is what it is. You know, so that's the name of the game now. I'm gonna get me a guru. Gurus know that, man. They killing it. Hey, more power to them, brother. I mean, hey, I don't hate the play. I hate the game, man. If they can do it, do it. Oh my gosh, I yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not gonna. I'm just not gonna rape no parents with no Vaseline. Uh-uh. I ain't no, raping nobody like no. that. No. I can't do it. No, you're right because it, you respect the game enough. You respect, respect the guys. The game enough. Yes, the guys and around you. I respect you. all the greats I played against. 
the greats before me who paved the way from, from Mr. Robinson being an African-American player for what he had to endure. So I'm not going to go out here and sugarcoat it and rape the game. I'm going to teach you what I've been taught. I'm going to teach you what helped me to endure and make a great living for almost 12 years in the majors. So I'm not going to do no computer guru super dad teaching. I can't do that. I can't. I mean, I, th- I th- you know, it's just play, you know, coming up through baseball. I think the, you know, the biggest lesson was, I think you talk about just, you know, you're, you're a black guy from South Carolina playing South professional Carolina baseball, ball. right? You think about the, just the, the melting pot of, of nationalities that we've played with from the get go. Yeah. Right. You hear these stories right from the beginning. So, you know what, so you guys are all trying to get there. It wasn't like, oh, you know, I'm going to hate somebody because, you know, they're, they're from Dominican or they're, they're, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, you guys were, everybody was there together. Right. So there wasn't, it yep. wasn't animosity towards anything else. And I, you know, I, I think that helps helped, uh, you know, just, just being around it of knowing this is, this is us together, you know, regardless of what's going on in the world today, it's, it's about us yep. doing this together. Right. And having yep. fun doing it. Yeah. Right. Having fun. I mean, yeah. sports bring, sports bring some form of unity to to all the foolishness that we have going on in the world today, uh, Mitch. We have a lot of senseless killings. I mean, we still battling for blacks to have certain rights to do certain things. We know we know the the playing field of you know of African American and whites are are different. But when you go to a we, but when you go to a sporting event and LeBron James takes it down the court and he dunks on somebody, you will see black fans and white fans high-fiving. So you think about it. You go to a basketball game. You got 10 blacks on the court, Mitch. But the majority of the stadium is white. You go to an NFL game, Mitch, out of the 22 players on the field, 17 are black. The majority of the stadium is white. So they cheer for black athletes and it brings the stadium together for four quarters. But then we go home and turn on the news. You see blacks killing each other. Then you see whites killing blacks or blacks killing whites. But then we just celebrated. I'm not gonna say celebrated. We mourn, I'm, I'm, excuse me for saying that. We mourn the deaths of the loss of the loved ones two days ago for 9-11. If you look at it, it was no foolishness going on. Think about it. This whole country came together for a matter of two weeks. From black holding hands, from gangs tying up their rag, their do-rags or whatever. Different cultures came together as one for two weeks because you had black, you had Asian, you had white firefighters that was loving each other. Nobody thought about the foolishness that was going on at that time when that happened. Because we as a country came together as a unity the way God intended for it. Now that event had to happen to show that we can actually become one. But we have so much hatred before that and in this country way before you and I time that we can't get past that. But it had to take an event like that to happen, to show us that we need to come together. Now, since that been 21 years ago, it seems like what JFK and Martin Luther King fought for, we 10 steps behind 1960s now, and we in the year 2022. Now, I'm just keeping a G with you. Yep. You know? And it's sad, but sporting events do bring black and white together. Yeah. But when the game is over, everybody go to their separate ways, you know? But, hey, it is what it is, brother. But you're right. I mean, but you think about the, the on the baseball side of it. I mean, you said yes. blacks, you know, Latinos. But we're talking Latinos from, you know, Venezuela, Dominican, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. Mexico, Mexico, right? Panama, yeah. Colombia, right? Yeah. These yeah. guys, and, and we're all together. And we're around each other all the time, right? There wasn't, you know, if there was any issues between any of us, you know, it was going to be handled right away in the clubhouse. Guys yeah. were going to fight or whatnot. And that was it. 
and that, that was you, it. you know, that and, was and it. you know, and it's you know now you talk about uh, just like you know the interaction you had. You just talk about you know we joke about black and white and this and that. It's it's not personal with us. We're just sitting here having a good time, right? We're just that's just it. because that's how we we were brought through this. We worked through it together. You know, yes, you were no better than I was. I'm no better okay. than you were. We we nope. both put in the work. And we knew, so we're able to, and, and some people don't get that. Some people get, get offended or whatnot. You and I have in this conversation, you know, it, okay, well, somebody might say, well, you're, well, you, you're a racist or that. Well, what, what am I? I play with so many different personalities of people, right? You and I are sitting yeah. here talking about it, but it, and that's what I mean. But it takes, you talk just about one person gets upset and then they run with it and, yeah. just, and gone. And then all of a sudden now, as opposed to, wait, this is blown way out of proportion, but and that's it. And I think if it's, if it comes down to bottom line, if you and I know the truth, it shouldn't matter what anybody else thinks, right? It Regardless of matter. baseball, it whatever it is in the world, if we whatever know the truth. Is. Yeah. Whatever right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I like about Arizona, man. Like our core, our guys, we love each other, man. Uh, we really do from, from, from Ken Kendrick, our owner to Derek Hall, our president to Mike Hayes and our GM down to Barfield, our farm director. Man, it, there ain't nobody thinking about that foolishness, man. We're trying to win games. You know what I'm saying? Nobody thinking about this white guy, this, or this Latin guy, this, or, you know, the black guys over. No, man, these young kids ain't thinking about that. And if you look at the younger generation, mention they ain't thinking about you no know, racism. I'm talking about younger generation just in general. I'm, I'm seeing now more interracial friends. I'm not talking about a couple just friends at school from black and white just hanging, just kicking it. There's, they're not thinking about, well, my great-grandmother didn't like you because of your skin. They ain't, these kids ain't thinking about that. It, it, these kids think about TikTok and IG and now they ain't thinking about that nonsense anymore anyway. So, you know, they they hear it because you have some ignorant adults that continues to try to drive that foolishness in their minds and their heads and, you know, in their thought process. So that's why it continues, you know? So, you know, I, I'm glad I played this great game of baseball. Had a chance to meet guys like yourself, be friends with guys like Roy Halliday, Chris Carp. I got a lot of white friends, man. You know, Adam Dunn, that boy, they silly. He's just like you. You know, Jake Peavy, you know, and in different sports, you know. So it's it's awesome to see because the, the outside world needs to see that even though he's white, yeah, I can break bread with this dude because in Jesus' name, that's my brother, though. I know what society says. But we don't supposed to live by society anyway. But that's where the world caught up in. We caught up in society, societal laws and and whatever society agrees with, though. So say it's cool or not cool. Yeah. That's the escape you're allowed to uh, that we had as athletes. Hey man, let's you know, let's get away from that. We'll just let's go play some football. Let's go whatever it is. Even if I, yeah. I can't play basketball yeah. or not or hockey, let's go play. Or just something to do, let's right? And, and that's yeah. what and that's what that's what built that camaraderie and everything else. So um, yeah. You know, but oh man, I man, I appreciate you sitting down with me and talking. We definitely have to For follow sure, this brother. up. We have to get your mom on here one day, give some stories about you growing oh, up, yeah. sure. and then uh, continue. Best of luck with with uh, with the Arizona gig, man, and and we'll and stay in touch, man. We'll uh, we'll definitely have to do this again. All right, oh, definitely, will, man. I appreciate it, man. Good seeing your brother. Good talking to you, man. Absolutely, and still looking good too, man. though. I like it. Number love, Joe. Hey, hey, I'm a handsome fella, and I, I told you. So, so what you about to get is. People, people about to start texting you and say, was that Denzel uh, mixed between Brad Pitt on your TV just now? You be like, yeah, that's him. 